Hi, welcome back. Really pleased you decided to say, as I'm sure there's much more fun to come with my final two guests. But what about this weather? I mean, who needs grease when you've got this in Grampian? Is it the greenhouse effect? I think we'll find out, will we? Is it, what do you think? Is it the greenhouse effect that's causing this wonderful weather? Any, uh, any, uh, let's, let's think. You, you drive, sir. Right. Do you drive a car? Yes, yes. Yes. Do you use leaded or unleaded petrol? Uh. Still leaded. Still leaded. So uh, you're helping uh, to create this wonderful weather exactly. <laughs> by making a hole in the ozone. Mm -hmm. How about the ladies? Do you still use aerosols or have you changed? Are you green conscious now, do you think? Ladies, give me a shout. Do you still use aerosols? No. no. Yes. Here's a young lady in here who probably uses <laughs> hairspray. Do you use aerosols? Non aerosols. Non aerosols. Non is it CFCs? That's right. You don't use them. Good for you. How do you feel about it? I mean, uh, are you becoming more green conscious? You, sir. I would think so, yeah. So I would think so, yes. You think so? Yeah. Why? Do you think this message is getting through to us that I perhaps is, we're, yes. we're making yeah. things difficult for future generations? That's correct, yeah. Well, it's probably a jolly good thing. <laughs> right, let's have a wee, show of, a wee show of hands, I think. Yes, that's a good idea. Do you think to be green conscious now is a good thing, or do you not really worry about it? Those who think we should be green conscious, put your hands up. Well, I think that's outstanding. Everybody's feeling the same way. So I think it's a jolly good thing. Thank you. It wasn't that painful now, was it? <laughs> More painful for me. <laughs> My next guest says he's been 38 years in the business and still hasn't been found out. He hosted seven series of Grampian's popular Welcome to the Cayley and is a constant purveyor of mirth and entertainment. It's always a pleasure to introduce Johnny Beatty. <laughs> I like that wee chat there at who needs grease. <laughs> Alex Surin just said to me, are you, are you using grease in 2000? I said, what makes you think that? He said, you look like a 2000 year old Greek. Sean <laughs> <laughs> Gordon Singler's right, I'm under, re I'm under false pretenses as well. I thought it was about toy, bo toy boys too. Don't tell me you want to be one as well. Oh, well, I mean, I, I spend half of my time turning down invitations for the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the time, I'll take off their bus passes, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the gold disc, isn't it? Where is it? The gold disc. The gold disc is gone. The gold oh, disc is, is gone. No, I'm sorry. You, you've missed out on this You one. can't win it them could, all. It could still come. You never know. Listen, 38 years, it's never, is it? 38, 38 years. years. I started out on uh, May the 19th, 1952, in the good old Tivoli Aberdeen. Did you? Was this your first gig then in Aberdeen? That was my first professional engagement with Robert Wilson, the older people remember. Remember Robert? Yes. Wonderful. Down the Glen, the voice of Scotland. Ah, yes. And what a gentleman too. Oh, Super yes. singer. Fifteen pound a week, and I found out later that was a lot of money. I was getting more than anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Had a good lawyer, though. <laughs> Yeah. When you were a boy, who were your comedy heroes? Who were the people My that comedy heroes when I was a boy. I used to love uh, Tommy Morgan and Jack Anthony. Oh, yes. And latterly, Big Chick, Chick Murray. I love Chick. Chick Murray. Of course, you've done Nowadays, this. Nowadays, a man who makes me laugh all the time is Jack Murray. I love Jack Murray. I'm talking Scottish comedy yes, now, you know. Yes, yes. Like Jack's At the other end, I like, like Tommy Cooper, people like that, you know. But what's yeah. happening to comedy? What has happened to comedy? I mean, it, it, in 38 years, you must have seen enormous changes in the comedy business alone. Well, I mean, the young alternative comics nowadays, I mean, if you take away bodily functions, they're having to get an act. <laughs> <laughs> really, you know. I played His Majesty's Theatre Aberdeen in 1965 with Kevin McKellar, and the script had to be vetted by the Lord Chamberlain. I still have them at home, blue penciled. Really? And at that time, a lot of royal babies were being born. You know, the, the Queen, Princess Margaret, Princess Alexander, Duchess of Kent. And I had a wee line in the script. There's so many royal babies about to take the, the, the Union Jack down from Buckingham Palace, they need the line for nappies. <laughs> <laughs> it was taken out. Then I said, now they know what they mean by England expects. That was deleted. Oh, really? Did a series in the BBC where you do the occasional gig? Yes, art. has been known. 1959, and they wouldn't let us do gags about pubs. Why? I said to the producer, there are more... There are more pubs in Parliamentary Road in Glasgow than there are houses. <laughs> we don't talk about them. He says, I'm sorry, I don't want to talk about them. So that was that. Things have changed in the nappy oh, line as well, John. Oh, they don't hang yeah. nappies out Disposable. anymore. <laughs> Disposable, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So there's been a lot of changes in that aspect. I suppose the kind of climate has changed. Uh, 
the permissive society. You yes, know, indeed. Yeah. You, you've got this album out at the moment of your favourite old That's Scots comedians. Uh, Some still. My uh, tribute to the ten kings, kings of Scottish comedy. Now, yeah. you mentioned Chick. Yeah. And I think Chick Murray must be a favourite with so oh, many people. Wonderful. Is it, actually, is it impressions you do then of these people? I do sort of tribute so but everybody does the impressions of Chick, you know, Chick and Tommy Cooper, everybody did that, just like that, you know, they all did it on Chick, you know. Yeah. But Chick was such a lovely comic, wasn't he? And I knew him very well, and uh, his book, The Best Way to Walk, the biography, is very, very funny, you know. Chick got into the, the bank in London, you know, and to trying to cash a cheque in London. And uh, the teller said, hey, can you identify yourself? And he took a mirror out of his pocket, he said, oh, yes, it's definitely me. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, isn't it? I met him in I met him in Sucky All Seat one day outside the Lacano Ballroom, and uh, we had a blather the way for about half an hour. Check now, you know. I said, "Check, I must go." You know, it's, I'm, I'm meeting somebody. I said, oh, "Oh, very well." I said, "I said, by the way, when I approached you, was I coming from Charing Cross or going towards it?" I said, "You're coming from." Oh, she's good. Then I've had lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Incredible man. Oh yeah. This, this place brings back happy memories. I'm not just talking yeah. about Tivoli, but I mean hosting the Grampian. Uh, welcome, welcome to the Kaley. Kaley. That, great, great. And you know, I was watching your, the, the captions at the beginning. Uh, you had the wee boy, wee Stuart Anderson. Yes. Well, Stuart, wee Stuart's father was on the original cast of Welcome to the Kaley. And I used to introduce him. Some of the, the audience will remember as my wee pal Stuart Anderson. Do you remember that? Good. Now I'm working with the wee boy. <laughs> and I must say, I'm feeling quite good. I might finish up working with the grandson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing wee double acts with him, oh, he's full of the old conference. Very good, the kid, you know. Oh, he's fantastic. Frightens the life out of me. Yeah. <laughs> you, I wish I'd shares in him. Are you doing Getty well, like, at the Getty summer show? I'm back in, in the, the Getty air. Uh, air for the summer, the 15th summer. Mm. That's I'm so big, I've been here that often, being a little Rabbi Burns. <laughs> <laughs> They'll get a petition up down there eventually. <laughs> Keep BT out, I'm sure they will, you know. And the family are doing well too, Louise. Maureen's doing Maureen. well, the, my daughter, she's doing well. She's opening tonight in London in a Watford in, t in Tartuffe with John Fortune. And Louise is just back from Marbella. She was doing an episode with Rab C. Nisbet in Marbella. Oh, yeah. Ten days in Marbella and paid for it. Can't, it can't be bad, can't eh? Cannot be bad. So we, chon we change with Stonehaven, you know. Right? Are you still as happy in the business? Then? I love it. I love anything. it. As you say, I'm getting away with it. I mean, I, I might even take no. it up professionally, you know. I think so. <laughs> Don't do anything too rash now. Don't sing the wedding of Joe Mackay, he says, please. <laughs> <laughs> you might get a chance to sing the Anything wedding of Joe Anything that. You might still get a chance to sing the, the wedding of Joe Mackay, but stay with me at the moment because I want you to meet my next guest. Okay? Uh -huh, looking forward to it. Meantime, Johnny Beatty, ladies and Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> One of my next guest's claims to fame is that she was once the fastest shorthand writer in Britain at 300 words per minute. Yes, 300 words per minute. It's not bad, is it? Her career goes back to the days of Itma, the McFlannels, Life with the Lions, and goes all the way through to Highway, Rent-A-Ghost, and Victoria Wood as seen in TV. She's extremely well known and loved. She'll be here in a flash. Molly Weir. <laughs> These toy boys, toy oh, boys, no. oh, toy no, boys no, and old boys, you're, I love them both. Your toy boys here, Molly. <laughs> you are you're in a queue. Aye, well. Oh, ah, uh, you'll get it's two Zimmers part to your side, aren't <laughs> <laughs> It's good to see you. The Zimmer falls. It's lovely to be in Aberdeen again. Well, yes. Why does Aberdeen bring back memories to you as well? I saw a Gregory Girl in Aberdeen. Did you? The Gregory Girl and local hero were up here for the holiday and we booked our seats and queued up. Marvellous. And John Gordon Sinclair was a local hero as well. I yeah. know, I never got his phone number, that's why I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, how did you get here today? Well, I flew. Now, I'm, I'm a noted non-flyer. Everybody says, I went to Sardinia one year and had 14 trains and four boats. <laughs> <laughs> because I wouldn't, I wouldn't fly. Honestly. And then, <laughs> last October, I was invited by the Australian government to go to Australia to represent my country, Scotland or England or Great Britain, at the Australian Women of the Year lunch. So everybody says, you have to go, Molly, you'll have to fly. Well, you know, it was so unimaginable. I couldn't imagine flying to Aberdeen. I couldn't imagine flying to Glasgow. But somehow it was a fairy tale to fly to Australia. So swallowing deeply, I said I would go. 27 Long hours. Long time. 
Well, they always say the most dangerous parts going up in the air and coming down. Yeah. So I got up at Heathrow, down at Frankfurt, <laughs> up at Frankfurt, <laughs> down at Bahrain, <laughs> stuck there for three and a half hours while they looked for a hydraulic leak. Oh, no. I said to the pilot, I'm no moving till you find that leak. <laughs> and up again, doing it at Singapore, up again and doing it at Brisbane. But the funniest part was, at the last minute, who came with me but Kate Eddy, oh, our intrepid, intrepid reporter. reporter. Yes. Now, I thought, oh, this is great. Well, in the middle of the night, she was sitting beside me, in the middle of the night, a voice came over and said, ladies and gentlemen, we're expecting very bad turbulence, will you please fasten your seat belts. So I opened my eyes and of course Kate was sound asleep and I thought she'll move her safety belt on. And I went, Kate, Kate, you have to fasten your seat belt. And she goes, I was asleep with my seat belt fastened. <laughs> <laughs> I waited in the morning and she wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought she's left the plane. Was it something that you said? Aye. And I said to the steward, where is the lady that was sitting beside me? He says, she's shipped it to another seat. <laughs> <laughs> you nearly caused havoc as well when you went oh, to the loo in the plane. I did. I came, back, I, came, I came back in a jumbo jet, which was a newer one, a newer model. Now, in the way I, I've got very fair skin, and everybody says, put plenty of moisturiser on. They told me in the plane, because they change the air 27 times, <laughs> and your skin dries out 27 times. So they said, put, put plenty of moisturiser. I would change the ladies room on the way out, and of course, there is a recognisable wee jar of moisturiser behind a glass thing, you rub it in your face. Coming back, before I went to bed, I was the only woman in this particular part of the plane. I go into, I thought, well, I'll just make myself comfortable before I go to bed. When I, sleep. I mean, when I say go to bed, I mean put things over your eyes and try and sleep. So I went there, and then I thought, where is the moisturiser? 27 times is it going to be changed? <laughs> and I couldn't see moisturiser. So I, it was all computerised. It'd only been in flight twice. So I pressed all the wee buttons, including the alarm button. <laughs> Bells flashing, all hell let loose, feet pounding along, battering at the door, and he goes, yes, 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 open up. And I said, it's just this wee Scots non flyer. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the moisturizer? <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't mind. Uh, a wee bit apprehensive, you know. I believe in the old Jewish proverb of God had meant us to fly to get us tickets, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in our business, really, it, it, it does help, you know, yeah, because the, the world's your oyster now. Oh. It's, a, it's, a small, it's a small place now. I mean, you can nip back and forth to America, oh. Canada, and all that. John, and if, I still if you don't, don't fly, like you know. Yeah. I well, still listen, don't well, like I'm it. with you. I don't like it all that Well, I flew up today yeah. because when, I, when they rang me about this, they said, I thought I had a terrible time up in Glasgow a fortnight ago. Three and a half hours late. I should have been in Glasgow at half past six in the morning. Ten o'clock, I arrived in Glasgow. Going back, I had an electrical fault. One whole sleeper coach went dark, so all the second class passengers bunged into the first. All the first ones turned up and there was a fight. Because <laughs> they, so I thought, I, how do they get up here? I said, she said, mostly they fly. And I said, what does it involve? We do everything, so I write. But I've only got to look at a plane now and I get jet lag. <laughs> no, listen, be before we, we get carried away with planes oh, here, I, I mean, I... <laughs> now, I've got to say, I'm sure John remembers too, happy memories for me of uh, the McFlannels oh, and yeah. Baby oh, Daniels yeah. and Ben Lyons. Lovely. Were those great days in radio when you started? It, oh, out? yeah. Oh, oh but the, the McFlannels... Now, I knew Helen Pride very well, and of course, she wrote to uh, Ivy McTweed for me, Poison Ivy, you know, mm -hmm. your mother's a fish custard family, <laughs> you know, and old oh, Willie used to say, I'll like Ivy, she talks Coleman, just let me... But Gordon Jackson, when every time he came up, he used to go into the listen with Howard Locker into the control yeah, room. Yeah. And one of it, I always remember one night I was with Effie Morrison, who played Giggling Bella. She never uttered a word in the eleven series. <laughs> she laughed in a different tone to everything I said. <laughs> and one of the things was we were dying to go with the big boys to Bear's Den, and the big boys didn't want us. So I, I come rushing in and I say, Oh, Bella, the big boy says there's bears and bears then. Oh, Bella, have you saw the bears? Now, Gordon Jackson was up from London and he thought that was the funniest line he'd ever heard. Every time he signed his postcard, he said, Oh, Molly, have you saw the bears yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I'm, I'm going to stop you here for, for a moment because tonight we have 
actually a surprise guest, and it's a friend of both. I'm sure you know this oh. Murray very well. He's, he hasn't had a very great time health-wise. In fact, uh, he has retired from the business. But I'm delighted to welcome to the show tonight because he's, he's a man who's given so much to Scottish theatre and entertainment. So please welcome none other than Andy Stewart. <laughs> Another govern man. <laughs> another govern man. It's a takeover, my dad. Oh, you're looking great. Thanks very much. Oh, Thank you. The last time I saw you was in this very oh, studio. Oh, Shammy wow. Dan. That's right, Shammy yes, Dan. Yes, the last yes, time yes, I saw you yes. was here. And how about Donald? Where's your trousers? Well, oh, come you on. Yes, 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 yes. The top 20, Andy. I got a lovely postcard from Jimmy Logan who said to me, he says, hey, we know that you sold 75% of the rights, but don't go into mourning just yet. Ah. <laughs> it was wonderful to see it, though. Well, it was. It was a great oh, surprise to ah, me. Yeah. I was sitting in the house one night, and the phone call rang, and this was another record company that I have record for, you see, a wee Scottish yeah. company, and I had promised them that I would do... Yeah, yeah. The, it was to be called the final LP. I wasn't oh, too keen ah. in the title. <laughs> 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 I, don't like not very I, thought, I thought the final LP would be my confession to Peter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said, you know, he says, uh, you're aiming for number... They tell me that you're aiming for number one at uh, Christmas this year. This was about the 8th of December. Uh -huh. I yeah. said, yeah, I thought, I said, you're joking. And I, said, <laughs> and I quickly whipped out my diary to make sure it wasn't the 1st of April. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it all just happened very suddenly and yeah, very, yeah. very strangely. It's one of these things that happened in show business and you see... And it's great, you know, I was, I was doing Mother Goose at Air, Andy, and uh, I was, uh, somebody, the producer said, what numbers do you want to do? I said, come on, it's got to be Andy's number, Donald. God bless you. And the kids, <laughs> Andy, the kids lifted the roof off. You know, obviously these kids, a lot of these kids wouldn't have heard it. Because that's, that's until true, it was brought yeah. out again. That, that's true, yeah. And it was the biggest number in the Panama. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, it was. It oh, was, it was it was a and I did your wee wiggle, you don't mind, I did do. No, you do it better <laughs> than I do. I, 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 was in, I was in drag queue, you know. I was in, <laughs> Mother Goose did the wee wiggle. Andy's that wiggle. Line that you use? I love your line about the, about the man, the, 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 the drag artist, Johnny's got a most brilliant line. Oh, what's that there? He says, It's his wife, I'm sorry. Ah, <laughs> it's, it's his wife, I it's, it's his wife. You know, the two Glasgow women talking about the pantomime. She says, It's his wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it's a lovely line. Oh, listen, I've got to ask you because I, people will be very disappointed if I don't ask you. You really are looking great. How are you feeling? And have you retired? That's yes, in, indeed, I've retired completely. Oh, yes, 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 there's no doubt are about that. Are you sure of that? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, You're John. not going to do a Frank Sinatra? No, I'm not going to do a, 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 a Frank Sinatra, <laughs> right as the colour of my eyes are. No, I'm not yeah. going to do a Frank <laughs> I was told by a very well-known, the heart specialist in Aberdeen, he, yeah. he examined me last July, and he, I knew it was serious because he'd taken the white coat off and he'd put the suit on. <laughs> 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 and, he, and he came into my wee room, my wee ward, and he said, I think it's time, Andy, that you hung up this morning. Yeah, I don't yeah. think you've got the, you know, the... the they're doing away with the with the with the two cylinder the Citroen, and I think you're about the same state. I think I think, I think they should do away with you. So that's me. I'm I'm completely out of uh, out of show business. And you're still keeping up the writing and all that, are you? Well, yes. Marvelous writer. I'm I'm oh. I'm, a, I'm concentrating on something I neglected for years, and that was lockside music. Yeah. If you yeah. forgive ah. the plug, and uh -huh. uh, I'm finding that. Uh, as I'm sure a lot of Scottish artists who've got involved in that side have found that uh, yeah. you've really got to keep at it and keep pursuing them, otherwise you'll not get your bobbies, you know? <laughs> you, know <laughs> you know, I think it's one of the classic pieces of all time of the Scottish business, show business, Andy's rumour. 
Oh, you have the river. Oh, oh, yes. That's, that's Run out and buy it. Yeah. That is a classic. Of all well, I've, I've played it several times. Oh, on, it's on brilliant stuff. stuff. And I just love it. And I say that every time. Now, listen, we were talking to Molly I hated, about... mind you, George. His stuff is <laughs> remarkable. If you'll excuse me. Yes. Me. He, says, he says, I was quite... He says, my heart will raise for a minute, he says, because I thought you were about to pass away. <laughs> and he says, I've got the rumour ready to do. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> the minute I hear you, you're really gone, you know. And I was talking to Molly earlier on about Life of the Lions and the McFly. And we're talking yeah. to Johnny yes, about, yes, about yes, feet of of youth, years ago. Youth, I mean, yes. how, how do you Sophie feel about the Andy. business now? I mean, do, do you, how, how do you feel about the business now? What sort of changes have you seen, and what do you think of the business today? The theatre. I find it quite strange in many ways. Yeah, the I business. That, yeah, I find yeah. that uh, for a start, there is not the formal training that we were lucky enough yeah, to yeah. receive. No, even true. although it was the Piros, if yeah, you like to call them that, enlarged, you know, there was at least a discipline. That's you know, right. oh, right. now it seems to me that they're quite happy. Uh, I, I listened to a programme the other night, and quite honestly, I was uh, just a little bit uh, annoyed because it seemed to me that the only words that got, got, that got laughs were words that... Uh, uh, Lauder used to say, you know, uh, uh, my, I've got a rule he used to say, I wouldn't say a line that I feel would embarrass my wife or my mother or my That's sister. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. true. And, the audience. and, and, uh, and nowadays, uh, I won't mention the words they use, no, but they seem to get a big, you know, <laughs> when they talk about shag, it's not tobacco they're talking Ooh. about. And they, uh, I heard one comedian mention the word five times the other night, and he got a laugh every time. Yeah, yeah. And then you get the ones who come on, and you know, uh, I won't mention any names, but all they're doing is standing there and roaring at the audience all the time, you know, and I feel this and I feel that and all the way, yeah, yeah. And I, well, you know, I think to myself, you know, this man should be at Nuremberg. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it's very sad. He's got to talk in here. I'd just like to say that I really do appreciate the fact that you, you stayed on today we, uh, and came into the show. It's been good to see you. And well, good that's to been see a great surprise so for us, well. I'll tell you. I'm it's glad it has. Yeah. It's been uh, nice to see you too, Molly. Looking so well. Yeah. I just Thank you all, please. John Beatty, Andy Stewart, and Molly. We are this will go on. But that's it. We really have got to go now. Thanks to my guests, John Gordon, Sinclair, Capacay, Johnny Beatty, Molly Weir, and of course yourself for being with me. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed your company. And perhaps you'll join me again at the same time next week. It's the last programme next week, which is a great shame. But until then, take good care of yourself and drive carefully. Bye bye. <laughs>